Now the subject that I'm going to go into is going to be a very, very important, this is going to be a very, very important subject and a much needed subject to go into. And the subject is called police brutality. Now I chose this very important subject, police brutality, to go into such, such a very important topic, such a very important subject and a much needed subject because there has been an overwhelming amount of violence that has been implemented toward our people by the police department throughout this past year or past five years we've seen the increasing violence of police brutality against our people and I thought that this was very important and it's necessary to go into this subject um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you some spiritual understanding of why there's so much overwhelming police violence and, and police brutality toward the black community throughout America that has been implemented out by the police against our people. And I'm going to give you some spiritual explanations in the Bible, in the word of the Most High, of why these things are occurring. Um... I want everyone out there to pay very close attention to everything I'm going to go into. I don't want you just to listen, but I want you to pull out your Bibles and I want you to follow along with me. Take a pen and a pad and I want you to write these scriptures down so that you can go back and you can read these scriptures on your own. I don't want you just watching my videos just for entertainment or just to watch it, just to hear the subject matter I'm bringing out. But I really want you to prove to the most high and to prove that yourself that you are actually trying to learn. That you're actually uh, diligent in your search for wisdom in the Most High's words and an explanation to the reasons why we are suffering through the problems uh, that we're having with the police department throughout America. So, again, the subject is called police brutality. Now, the very first scripture we're going to go to is the book of Jeremiah, the 27th chapter. We're going to start at verse 5. I have made the earth, the man and the beast that are upon the ground by my great power and by my outstretched arm and have given it unto whom it seemed meet unto me. So the heavenly father chooses which power on this earth will reign and what position of time which will each kingdom and government and empire reign upon this earth. The father gives every kingdom and government on this earth its due time and its due position to rule and reign on this earth. At this particular time, we're going into the ancient Babylonian Empire. And it says, verse 6, And now have I given all these lands into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant. And the beasts of the field have I given him also to serve him. And all nations shall serve him, and his son, and his son's sons, until the very time of his land come. When it says, until the very time of his land come, to the very time that his land begins to end, his rulership, his reign of authority and power on this earth. God gives every kingdom on this earth its due time to reign and to rule. So Babylon was given a position of time to rule on this earth and he put all nations under subjection under Nebuchadnezzar in the Babylonian Empire. And it says, and all nations shall serve him and his son and his son's son until the very time of his land come and then many nations and great kings shall serve him so serve themselves of him and it shall come to pass that the nation and kingdom which will not serve Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon and that will not put their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon that nation will I punish says the Lord with the sword and with the famine and with the pestilence until I have consumed them by his hand so the Lord ought not only gave Nebuchadnezzar the right and power and authority to reign and rule on the earth, but he made all nations, kingdoms and governments and all people to surrender their uh, authority over to him. That he was the superpower that ruled upon the earth and all nations was forced to surrender their uh, sovereignty over to him. Well, what is America today? America, according to the book of Revelations, is the mystery Babylon, the modern day Babylon that reigns over all the kings and governments of the earth. And any nation that will not serve America or bow down to America's policies and programs, the United States government will launch a preemptive strike against any kingdom and government that will not surrender 
onto the policies of, U of the U.S. government. The U.S. government does not really even need the support of the United Nations or the say-so or the go-ahead of the United Nations to invade any country that will not comply. The U.S. government is such a powerful kingdom on this earth that it cannot be destroyed by the hand of man until the God the Father wills it. But at this particular time, no nation has the military capabilities to take America down nor any type of organizations throughout this country has the military capability to come against the great enormous power of the U.S. government. Why am I showing you this? This is an important purpose and an important reason why I'm showing you this. Let's go to verse 9. Therefore hearken not ye to your prophets, nor to your divinators, nor to your dreamers, nor to your enchanters, nor to your sorcerers, which speak unto you, saying, Ye shall not serve the king of Babylon. Now, back in the 60s, we had a lot of pro-revolutionary movements and black militant groups in the 60s. The 60s was the era that sparked black revolution. Of course, we had Marcus Garvey back in the early 20s and Noble Drew Ali in the Morris Science Temple back in the 20s and 30s also. But it was the era of the 60s that sparked revolution. Uh, in the minds of most people, not just blacks, but most people that was rebelling against the government. And what did you see? You saw the government send the National Guard as well as the local police department in each city that rebellion began to begin to occur in. And the police department was annihilating leaders and organizations. Well, in 1966, there rose within our midst a black militant organization called the Black Panther Party under the leadership of Huey P. Newton and Bobby Seals. And these men started an organization called the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense in which they believed that they were going to rise up and raise an armed rebellion against the tyranny of the police department in every local city that our people dwelt in. Now, these men began to arm themselves with guns and they began to chant out black power and all power to the people and um, began to organize with other political movements that was going against the U.S. government. And, and the way the U.S. government saw it is that they were undermining the U.S. government and they were going against the national security of the United States government because the national director of the FBI during that time was J. Edgar Hoover. And he said out of his own mouth that there would be no militant organization in America that can threaten the national security of the United States government. So therefore, the federal government under J. Edgar Hoover and the Congress and Senate gave the FBI as well as local police the authority and the go ahead to neutralize and destroy black militant organizations and any revolutionary group that would rise up within the midst of the domestic confines of America to wage war or to arm themselves and rebel against the government. Now the Lord told us this, therefore hearken not ye to your prophets, nor to your divinators, nor to your dreamers, nor to your enchant en enchanters, nor to your sorcerers, which shall speak, which speak unto you saying, ye shall not serve the king of Babylon. The Lord put this country in the position that it is in for a position of time. And no organization has the military capabilities or the unification even within their organization to rise up an armed rebellion against America because they would be annihilated. And this was an example for us in this present earth age to look at of things what to do and things of what not to do. The Black Panthers were exterminated and neutralized and annihilated during the COINTEL program, the COINTEL Pro program that was developed under J. Edgar Hoover. Noble Drew Ali in the Moore Science Temple, they were annihilated also. Noble Drew Ali, Noble Drew Ali was assassinated in Newark, New Jersey. Uh, Marcus Garvey and was, was destroyed. His, his organization took him down because the father did not tell us to raise up a militant organization throughout America. And you see what these new black Hebrew Israelite organizations like the ISUPK under the leadership of General Yohanna saying out of his own mouth that we are going to build up the largest black militant organization in America. That's the wrong thing to do. Because the only thing you're going to do in following the ISUPK 
in following General Yohanna is he is going to lead his followers down the first class ticket to the state penitentiary and to the concentration camps and to the detention centers. And same thing with Tahar and the Great Millstone. Even Nathaniel 7 said that of Israel United in Christ. You get out there on these street corners like these nut jobs down 34th Street in Manhattan preaching all this garbage out on the street about what they're going to do when they get the power this, they're going to do this and they're going to do that. You go into jail by following these men. And that's what's going to happen. Those two militant organizations, the Great Millstone and the ISUPK, these two organizations are going to lead their followers right to the concentration camps. They're going to lead their followers right to the state penitentiary or they're going to lead them right to the FEMA camps or concentration camps. You go into jail by following these men. Now, Yahweh bin Yahweh, who's dead now, but back in the 80s and late 90s, early, early 90s, tried to build up a black Hebrew Israelite militant group down in, in the state of Florida and down in Miami. And you saw what happened to him. The federal government came right in, marched into his school and dragged him right to jail right in front of his followers and you can get on YouTube and you can Google Yahweh bin Yahweh and it's a miniature movie of his life and it shows you in that miniature movie how the FBI came right into his school and dragged him out and right in front of his co uh, congregation you understand what I'm saying this is what happens when you listen to these liars and these false prophets that the father has not chosen telling you to rise up against the government or to be rebellious and disobedient against law and order you saw the same thing that happened to David Koresh in the Branch Davidian down in Waco Texas in the early 90s you saw the same thing with Jim Jones when he executed a state representative uh, when he came down there under the ins insistence of many cult leaders, families, I mean cult members, family that were trying to free their people, free their family away from Jim Jones, they contacted a state representative. I think his last name was Ryan. And he went down and had a conversation with Jim Jones down in the, in the country of Guyana because Jim Jones had fled the U.S. and went down and built Jonestown down in Guyana. Right? The state representative went down to Guyana to have a personal conversation with Jim Jones. And Jim Jones said, if they want to leave, then let them leave. But then he sent his angels of death to go into the jungles of Guyana and execute these people before they got to the Guyanese airport. Then he knew he was going to come under persecution from the government for having that state representative murdered, along with killing some of his followers that tried to flee. So he made all of his followers commit mass suicide. And that was the largest mass suicide ever in U.S. history. Although they were in Guyana, they were all U.S. citizens. That was the largest mass suicide ever in the history of the United States. Well, what about MOVE organization in Philadelphia back in the late 80s? I was a young man back in that those days when the city of Philadelphia destroyed the MOVE organization down Osage Avenue out in West Philadelphia and they dropped C4 on the, the MOVE house and they destroyed almost that whole block. You know, Philadelphia is a city built with row houses just as Baltimore is in Boston and Brooklyn and Washington DC. You know, the northeastern cities are built more with row houses. New Jersey also. Trent, New Jersey, Camden, New Jersey. Those cities are built like Philadelphia. And they are built with row houses. So when the city of Philadelphia decided that they could no longer negotiate with MOVE organization, they dropped a bomb on that house and blew that house and all the houses around uh, the MOVE house to bits. And it went up in a blaze of inferno. Fire. Now, I was young when that happened, but everybody in Philadelphia knows about MOVE organization down Osage Avenue in West Philadelphia. Everyone knows about that. And to those of you who don't know, get on YouTube or Google it and you'll see how and they'll show you the video of how the city of Philadelphia got the order from the governor of, uh, of Pennsylvania up in Harrisburg to bomb the MOVE organization because they were defiant and they were disobedient and they wanted to again rebel against law and order. Well this is what the Black Panther Party did back in the 60s following after Huey Newton and Bobby Seals and Eldridge Cleaver and Stokely Carmichael who was a part of SNCC but had affiliations with the Panther Party, H. Rat Brown and, and uh, 
Geronimo Pratt and Mumia Abu Jamal. He was a part of the Philadelphia chapter. He's in prison for the rest of his life for accusations of him killing a police officer, Daniel Faulkner, right downtown Center City, Philadelphia, in Society Hill, in the Society Hill section. Do you see this? The, the Lord told you not to hearken unto these men. Verse 9, Jeremiah 27 and 9. Therefore, hearken not ye to your prophets, nor to your divinators, nor to your dreamers, nor to your enchanters, nor to your sorcerers, which speak unto you, saying, Ye shall not serve the king of Babylon, for they prophesied a lie unto you, to remove you far from your land, and that I should, and that I should drive you out, and ye shall perish. But the nations that bring their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him, those will I let remain still in their own land, says the Lord, and they shall till it and dwell therein. Any nation that will surrender and submit under the neck of Babylon, the Lord said he, he will allow those kingdoms to, to, to prosper and to remain standing. But any government, empire, nation that will not surrender to Babylon the Lord said, I will, I will bring utter destruction against you. Even within the domestic confines of America, which is modern day Babylon today, you had militant organizations trying to rise up a rebellion against the government. And that's what the Black Panther Party Party uh, tried to do. The Black Panther Party tried to ri uh, raise up a rebellion against the government. And what happened? They were neutralized. Then you have this, the new Black Panther Party today um, that they don't, you know, they don't go as far as the old Panther Party did, but they're still talking that militant foolishness about what they're going to do in, in this day or what they're going to do in that day. And I'm going to tell you something, man. These guys aren't going to do anything. OK, the Most High has set Babylon up, this modern day Babylon up for a purpose, and he will deal with Babylon in his appointed time. You don't have the military capabilities to take down this country. You are a fool for any one of you who follow the new Black Panther Party or the old Black Panther Party. All Huey Newton and Bobby Seals did was get a lot of black people killed and thrown in jail. And a lot of Black Panthers are overseas now in exile, hiding because they can no longer come back to the United States. Because if they do, they will be arrested. So that's why the Lord said, don't listen to these men. Let's jump down to verse 13. Why will you die? See that? Why, why will you die and not live? By following these militant organizations throughout America. I mean, look at what happened to Randy Weaver. Now, Randy Weaver was a member of the Aryan nation and he tried to build up his own little Aryan nations uh, 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 organization to rebel against the government, to start up a, a, a revolution. And what did the government do? They came right on his compound. And they killed his son and they, and they arrested him. Now he was at a congressional co a court hearing crying before the Congress. But he's such a revolutionary. The Aryan nation are such revolutionaries. The neo-Nazi skinheads are such revolutionaries. The Ku Klux Klan are such revolutionaries. But every time you look around, every time they exercise an act of violence, they're arrested. So it shows you their movement is not progressing. There's still police brutality in our communities and there's still uh, cults trying to rise up rebellion and the police will come right in along with the FBI and the ATF and they will neutralize these organizations. What happened to Dr. Malachi Z. York when he left Bushwick, Brooklyn and moved his followers, the Holy Tabernacle Ministries, down to Eatonton, Georgia? They came on his compound and they, they raided his compound and they dragged Dr. York out of jail. And Dr. York is in prison for the rest of his life. This is what happens when you follow these cult leaders. Look at David Koresh in the Branch Davidian down in Waco, Texas, as I said. Um, they wanted to stockpile weapons and stockpile guns and even shot it out with the police. And it was all over the news. What happened? David Koresh was murdered and many of his followers died in that house following these cult leaders. The police will come after you. The government will come after you. Janet Reno, the former attorney general under Bill Clinton, said it. Any organization that has a strong religious value in the Bible that promotes like a revolution, they will be looked at as, a, as an enemy of the state. And therefore, the government will come after them. The ISUPK under General Johannes out there on the streets talking, we're going to build up the largest black militant organization in America. He's not going to be able to do that, for one thing. Secondly, you follow Johanna, Johanna is going to earn you a first class ticket to the state penitentiary or you're going to the concentration camps. 
You're going to the concentration camps following Yohanna. That's where you're going. And you're going to the concentration camps following the Great Millstone under Tahar, Gabar, Aramlob, and Rakah. The elders of GMS, you go into you go into the death camps following these guys. The Lord said this. 13. Why will ye die, thou and thy people, by the sword, by the famine, and, and by the pestilence, as the Lord has spoken against the nation that will not serve the king of Babylon? Therefore, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that speak unto you, saying, Ye shall not serve the king of Babylon, for they prophesied a lie unto you. Now, when you come to the true message of Christ channel and you watch all my videos, 99.9% .9 of my videos I teach right out of the scriptures. So you can't say I'm coming out of my own mind. This this is your opinion. No, I'm reading the words of the Most High. And the Most High said, do not listen to these men when they out there talking this revolutionary foolishness about what they're going to do. The Black Panther Party was an example to us in our present earth age of what to do and what not to do. You don't stockpile weapons. What do you think you're going to do against a government like this that has so much power the military capability of the U.S. government is so stupendous that you can't even perceive the type of weaponry that these people have. Now, other countries have experienced America's military capabilities. MOVE organization experienced that, and that was the first time in the history of America that the U.S. government or a city government exercised, exercised that type of violence against U.S. citizens. That's to show you. The New World Order. That's to show you martial law. That's to show you what will happen when you try to raise up an armed rebellion against your government. You don't do that. The Bible says to submit yourself under all principalities and magistrates, as I've shown you in other videos. You are to be law-abiding citizens. Now, we stand on the word of God and we will not deter our faith in the word of God. But we do not use militancy to get our point across. That's my problem with the ISUPK, among other little things that they teach according to you know their belief. As well as the Millstone and all these other groups that came out of the original UPK, the Israeli Church of U, uh, uh, Practical Not, the, the Israeli Church of Universal Practical Knowledge under Ariadnem has risen these men up with this militant vibration that they think that they're going to get the power and they're going to do something. That's not recorded in the scriptures. We're not going to do that. You're not going to be coming against nobody. The Father is going to do that when He sends Christ back to judge this world. Okay, Revelation the 17th chapter gives us the breakdown of the fall of modern day Babylon, mystery Babylon along which is America. We we fall on on that. We fall and lie upon the prophecies of the Most High. We are on the prophecies of the Most High. Let God's word be true and every man a liar. Okay, according to the book of Proverbs, the 30th chapter, we let God's word be true. We don't arm ourselves with weapons. We don't stockpile guns. No, we don't roll like that. Other Hebrew Israelite brothers and sisters out there agree with me, and I know they do, that no, that's not the right action. We depend on the Lord through faith, not trying to set up a militant organization like you see these guys out there yelling and screaming in the street, talking about when they get the power, they're going to do this and they're going to do that. They're not going to do anything but lead their followers right down to the concentration camps. And that's exactly what happened to Yahweh bin Yahweh when they snatched him right out of his school. OK, that's what happens. Randy Weaver went through it. David Koresh went through it. Charles Manson went through all these cults out there telling you to rise up a rebellion in the police department and the government, the federal government will, will move right on on you. OK, so the Lord said, 14, there, therefore, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that speak unto you, saying, we sh ye shall not serve the king of Babylon, for they prophesied a lie unto you. For I have not sent them. The Lord said he didn't send these men. There, there, Proverbs 3 and 5 says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not toward thy own understanding. These men are leaning toward their own understanding. But the Lord said he didn't send these men. For I have not sent them, says the Lord, yet they prophesied a lie in my name, that I may drive you out and that ye might perish. Ye and the prophets that prophesied unto you. So we, when I say lie, I mean we lay, we lay. Upon the prophecies of the Most High, you know, there's two definitions of the word lie. Lie is is talking about a lie, actual lie. When you're speaking a lie, and then lie also means when you laying down. We lay down upon the prophecies of the Most High. We trust and lie our faith as we laying down our spirit upon the words of the Most High. Everybody with wisdom can understand what I'm saying. But these men trust in their own hearts. They're following a doctrine of false philosophy. 
The new Black Panther Party is dealing with more Egyptology and dealing with an Afrocentric mindset. The, the Lord is not dealing with these men. He didn't send these men. And he told us not to follow these men. The new Black Panther Party is going to get a lot of their followers arrested. So don't follow these men. I know members of the new Black Panther Party. I know King Samir, who got into all that trouble uh, in Philadelphia when he tried to stop people from voting at the voters registration drive. And then Fox News came out there and then even even Bill O'Reilly did a segment on him. And you, know, you understand what I'm saying? I know these guys. And these guys are going to lead their followers to destruction. Don't follow these men in the new Black Panther Party or these other groups out there talking that foolishness. For I have not sent them, says the Lord, yet they prophesied a lie in my name that I might drive you out and that ye might perish ye in the prophets that prophesied unto you. You see that? Now from there, let's go over to verse 22. They shall be carried to Babylon and there shall they be until the day that I visit them, says the Lord. Then will I bring them up and restore them to this place. So the Lord is saying Babylon must reign for a period of time. When the fall and demise happens to Babylon, I will retrieve my holy vessels that Nebuchadnezzar stole out of my temple and I will restore the children of Israel back into the land of Israel. Presently in our earth age, when Babylon is up, it's time of rulership, the Lord will restore his people back into their position. But not until his appointed time and only during his appointed time. Not under man-made appointed time, but under the father's appointed time. Does everybody understand that? Don't listen to these men. Now, let's go to the book of Romans. This is Romans, the ninth chapter, verse 17. Romans 9. Romans 9, and we're going to read verse 17. For the scripture says unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. So the Heavenly Father is telling us through the Holy Apostle Paul here that he rose up Pharaoh and allowed Egypt to become a powerful kingdom on the earth for the sole purpose of making himself known to the world by destroying Pharaoh's army. The children of Israel had no power to come against Pharaoh. The Lord said, I will do it. So we stand firm on the faith of the Most High. Let's read it again. Romans 9 and 17. For the scripture says unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. The whole entire world knows how the Heavenly Father took down Egypt's army and destroyed them and drowned their army in the Red Sea. The whole world knows of that. The whole, whole, the whole entire world has read this millions of times. There have been movies uh, uh, created on this. The father allowed these film directors. It is the father that works upon the minds of men to do his will. And he created these movies like the Ten Commandments that Charleston Heston played in to show you that, his, that this prophecy would, would come to pass. And it says that my name might be declared throughout all the earth, all the entire earth. Everyone throughout the entire world knows how the Heavenly Father destroyed Egypt and destroyed its army. So we put our faith in the Most High that he will protect us and that he will guide us. You have no business out there arming yourselves and don't listen to these militant organizations talking that. Because this is another aspect of police brutality. Because many of the Black Panthers were beaten by the police. They were murdered by the police, thrown in jail. Many of these militant groups suffer heavy persecution from the police department because of their defiance and their disobedience. So the father's telling you don't listen to these men. And then you have these new Hebrew Israelite groups out there trying to be more militant like the Panthers in the 60s. And these groups are coming out of the original UPK. And that school was coming out of the 70s and that era of the black power movement. And they had that mentality. But I'm going to tell you something. The, the, the minute you rise up and try and do something, that will be your demise. That's not in the scriptures the way that the father told us not to do that. There will be wars, race wars in this country because the Bible tells you that nation shall rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. But he did not tell us to engage in that. 
when you see riots going out there in the street, you as believers in the truth of the Most High are not to indulge in that. That's the two third of our people that the Most High is going to cut off and destroy anyway. That's why you see a lot of our young black men being shot down and murdered by the police across America because the Lord is getting rid of the two third. The one third he's going to protect from the midst of the population of our people while two thirds he's going to cut off and allow to be destroyed. So a lot of our young brothers and sisters that are being murdered by the police department in, in America, that's the two third that he's getting rid of. The one third he's going to safeguard and protect them while the two thirds is going to be cut off. That's why a lot of these brothers and sisters are dying. As we go on in the video, I'm going to show you that. Okay, now. Let's go to Second Peter's. Let's go to Second Peter's now. Here's Second Peter's, the second chapter, verse one. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. The Black Panther Party under Huey and Bobby were tied more to communism. You know, they they read a lot of different books from revolutionaries from foreign countries. Um, and adopted their teachings into their organization, which was pure foolishness. They also dealt with a lot of Afrocentricity also, which was pure foolishness. And they denied the Bible and they denied the Most High. Therefore, the Lord allowed destruction to come upon the Panthers because they denied him. And they were not the ones chosen and set up to lead our people. So that's why the father allowed destruction to come upon the Black Panther Party. Don't listen to these guys. Don't listen to the New Panther Party. Because these guys are going to do nothing but, but, but earn you a first class ticket to jail. And that's what's going to happen by you following these men. Okay? The old Panther Party suffered so much police persecution because they were not the ones chosen and set up to lead our people. So the Lord allowed them to be beaten and victimized by the police department and the federal government because of their one disobedience and because secondly, they will not inherit to the word of God. Okay. Now, verse two, and many follow their pernicious, pernicious, pernicious ways by reason of whom. That the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. The way of truth shall be evilly spoken of by these men. They won't accept the Bible. It's a white man's book. You know, many of them are tied to Islam or tied to the nation of Islam or tied to this group or tied to that group and they reject the Bible and they reject the truth on it. So they speak evilly of it and they will not accept it. So the Lord said, Many shall follow their pernicious ways. By reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of, and though, excuse me, and through covenants shall they, with with finished words, or finaged words, make merchandise of you. Many of these so-called leaders just want power, and they make they make a merchandise off their 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 followers. But but these men are liars. These men are, are false prophets, and they're liars that the Father has not chosen. But they're making merchandise off of you. They're making money. They're playing off of your emotion. You have a lot of agitators amongst our people also. You know, with the Ferguson riots and the riots in Baltimore, there were agitators that actually agitated that. But you never see the agitators on television. You just see the effect of the agitators when these people get out in the streets and riot. But where are the agitators who started the riots? You never see them. They're in, they're in the wings hiding. They're behind a tree hiding after they threw... The, the, they threw the, the brick through the window. They run behind a building and hide while many of our people get out in the streets and die. But the Lord is telling you don't follow these men because these men are going to lead you right down the path of the death and destruction following these men. OK, Who's, who make merchandise of you who judgment now of long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not. OK, let's go over to verse 12. But these as natural brute beasts, uh, many of these leaders are brute beasts. When you look at some of these groups out on the streets, they, they act like brute beasts, man. They act like monsters out here on those street corners. The GMS guys, look at the way they act. 
Do they act like spiritual men of the Lord yelling and screaming and talking about killing people and they're going to kill this person? You look at the ISUPK and you look at the way they act. There's nothing wrong with standing up and being strong and, and assertive. There's nothing wrong with exercising your voice, but it's a right way and a wrong way to do everything. When you set up there and make a proclamation about you want to build up the world's largest black militant organization, now you're going into your own mind and you, you boosting your, you're boosting yourself up with arrogancy. No, the father didn't tell us to build a militant organization, a radical organization. He told us to follow his laws, statutes, and commandments and follow them to the best of your ability. Ingest the spiritual words inside of you and try to walk as a righteous man and a righteous woman throughout your life. I myself have never had problems with the police. Now, I've been stopped before, like many of you, sure, but I, anytime the police officer stops me, I speak kindly to this man, respectfully to this man, and I've never had any physical altercations or confrontations with the police. Never, because the Lord always gave me that spirit of meekness and humbleness that I never would get out in the streets and conduct myself in that manner, and because of that, I don't have a criminal record. For all the years I've walked this earth, I've never seen the inside of a penitentiary. Never, never sat down with a probation officer. Never was on parole. Do you understand? Because I had parents that taught me the right thing and wrong things to, to, not to do. You know, the, the wrong things not to do and the right things to do. I had a father and a mother in the household that educated their children. And taught them not to get out there in the streets doing things in the street we have no business doing. So because of that, who's a better example to follow? A young man as myself that have never walked uh, in the path of a lot of these young black men and have gotten themselves in trouble and sitting up in the penitentiary? Or a young man that has walked, uh, his, uh, chose to do all types of deviancy and wickedness out there in the world to get himself in trouble? And the police are sick and tired of these young black boys walking around in the streets with their pants hanging off them, um, you know, underwear showing, dreadlocks hanging out their hair, mouth full of gold teeth, listening to that beastie like rap music, standing in front of people's legitimate stores, selling drugs all in front of their store. These police officers are getting sick and tired of these young black boys. Uh, as, 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 as well as a lot of these black women are very sick and tired of these young black men. They don't want to do nothing with their life but stand on the corner. They don't want to go get a job. They'd rather sell drugs on the corner. These police officers are getting sick and tired of going to the zoo every time they leave their families at home and get in that squad car and go out on these streets. They're not going to the zoo like in Philadelphia down 33rd and Gerard. They're not going to that zoo. The zoo they're going to is down North Philly. The zoo they're going to is down Southwest Philly. The zoo they're going to is out in Kensington and in Frankfurt. That's the zoo they're going to up in North Philly, down 29th and Gerard, all of the whole entire block of 29th Street, 33rd and Norris, 33rd and Gerard, I mean, excuse me, 33rd and, and, and Page, 33rd and Diamond, 33rd and Susquehanna, 33rd and Dolphin, 33rd and Montgomery, okay, 52nd and Market Street is the zoo, you understand what I'm saying, 57th and Woodland Avenue, all of Woodland Avenue, you know, before, you know, around, you know, the ghetto areas, not University City, is the zoo. You're sick and tired of it. If I was a police officer, I would be sick and tired of it also. So I do understand how they feel. Everywhere you get in your squad car, you got to patrol these areas. And I'm sick and tired of these people acting the way they do. So these police officers get frustrated and they get angry when they see these young black boys out there doing things in the street they got no business doing you notice how they don't jump on other racists it's only you because you have presented yourself in america as the animals and the beasts of the american society your own behavior has justified the police using their nightsticks against you and using weapons on you And the more and more you show yourselves, black people, as these low down degenerates who are worthy of destruction, you justify racial attacks by the police department against black Americans throughout this country by the way you conduct yourselves and by the way you carry yourselves. Just take a look at your behavior 
a lot of a lot of times you bring this heat down on yourselves, taking spray cans and writing stupid stuff all over the walls, walking down the street with headphones on, throwing up stupid gang signs, listening to that stupid beastie like rap music you listen to. Rap music is is a music of beasts and savages. Kill this nigga, kill that nigga. I hate using that word. Shoot this person, shoot that person, pimp this. Whore this, this whore is that, whore is this. Selling drugs here, selling drugs there. That's all rap music is. It's garbage. It's trash. It is beastie like music. And it creates a demonic spirit in a lot of you black boys. So when you get out here on these streets and try to act like what these rappers are portraying in these rap songs and in these rap videos, you are the ones going to jail, not the rappers. They're not going to jail, but they're pushing that demonic vibration on you. They're hatching those cockatrice eggs. And you are eating of those eggs and you are dying. You are being beaten by the police. You are being murdered by the police and you are going to jail. So these rappers have their 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 place in the, in the, in, the, in the eternal judgment of the father, too. For feeding our people death. But a lot of you stupid little black boys out here. You know I mean, you 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 black boys will make anybody mad with you. You got to get your minds right and come back to the most high in Christ. But you black boys will make anybody mad with you. Many of you are nothing but troublemakers. The Bible tells you in the book of Jeremiah that from among my people there are found wicked men. A lot of you black boys are nothing but straight up troublemakers. You will make anybody mad with you. And the way you act and the way you carry yourself out here on these streets. Even your own black woman can't stand a lot of you black boys. The way you carry yourself on these streets. And the police feel the same way. So when they take that nightstick and they bust your head, they beating your behind. Because the Lord is putting the spirit on them to beat your behinds. Now some of these innocent young black men may be innocent. My mother told me back when I was younger that the good is going to have to suffer with the bad. It's a, it's a sad reality, but it's true. Many of our brothers are going to suffer. Good brothers are going to have to suffer with the bad because of the racial stereotypes of how a lot of you black men are in these streets. You justify the police coming down on you, but some of us get caught in the crossfire. You'll make anybody mad with you. Now, here's Second Peter's, the second chapter, <clears throat> verse 12. But these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it pleasure to riot in, in the daytime they, they count it pleasure to riot in the daytime to get out in the streets and riot tearing up your community tearing up legitimate businesses what good is that going to do there's been police brutality in the 60s there's police brutality today Tearing up your neighbor is not going to stop these police officers from shooting you and beating you in the street when you disobey them. So you getting out in the street, rioting and acting stupid in the street. That's what they want you to do. Cause and effect. Create a condition. And then you get out there stupidly and start rioting in the street. Now the government has a reason, a legitimate cause to implement martial law and set up curfews and checkpoints throughout your community. Now your community is locked down in slavery once again. See how stupid you black people are? You getting out there listening to these agitators telling you to get out in the streets and riot. The father told us not to do that. But you listen to these men and you tear up the community and you and you fighting and robbing. And, and the thing about it, you ain't even rioting in the white neighborhood. You tearing up your own neighbors. Because that's what the agitators are there to do. To get you to tear your own neighborhoods up. But you ain't going up in the white neighborhoods and tearing their neighborhoods up. You tearing your own neighborhoods up. That's how stupid black people are. All right. Now, let's go to the book of Isaiah. This is Isaiah, the 59th chapter, verse 13. And transgressing and lying against the Lord. First of all, you have a lot of these different groups out there that lie on the Lord, like the nation of Islam. The nation of Islam is a major liar. The 5% nation are major liars. Nuwabian nation under Dr. York are major liars. The Islamic community are major liars. They lie against the Lord. That's why you have Professor Griff all over YouTube pushing out his... And all he's talking about is rap music. Like, 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 like that's the sole existence of, of his being is to talk about rap music. I met Professor Griff down broad and eerie. And I wrote down my channel, you know, the true message of Christ, 
seven, and I gave it to him. I said, Professor Griff, I want you to watch my channel because he was at Black and Nobel, the bookstore right on the corner of Broad and Erie. And I walked up to him before he got into the store and I walked up to him and I, and I wrote it, my YouTube channel address down to him. And I said, I want you to watch my videos because I've been te checking out some of your videos and hearing the things that you have, and all you talk about is rap music. We have so many different problems in this society to deal with unemployment, police brutality, gang violence, unemployment, pre teen pregnancies, HIV, AIDS. So many. All he wants to talk about is rap music and Hollywood. And that's how he gets the thousands of views on the YouTube because he ain't talking about nothing. So I wrote my channel down. I want you to watch and hear the true word of the Most High and hear the truth of what God is trying to expound upon our people. Whether he watched it or whether he not. I had his personal phone number at one time. You understand? And I really would like for this man to really get into the truth of the Most High and reject the teachings of Elijah Muhammad because it's not profiting our people any in any form, way, or fashion. It's foolishness. 13. In transgressing and lying against the Lord and departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, revolt, race wars, rioting. Now, look, again, the Bible tells us that nation will rise up against nation. We know that's going to happen. Nations breaks down to races. We know that these things are going to happen, but the Father told us not to indulge in that. Mm -mm. We don't riot, brother. We don't get involved with that. That's the two-thirds of our people who are not in the Most High. Let's read it again. 13. In transgressing and lying against the Lord, and departing away from our God. Speaking oppression and revolt. Revolt. Rioting. See, those are brothers and sisters that don't have the wisdom of, of the Most High. Because if you had no true wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the Most High, you wouldn't be in the streets tearing up everything and rioting. Mm -mm, we don't do that. Not conscious Israelites. We don't do that. Okay? Conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. And judgment is turned away backward, and justice standeth afar off. For truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. Yea, truth faileth, and he that departed from evil maketh himself a prey. He that departed from evil will make himself a prey. People will turn around and despise you and hate you for teaching the true words of the Most High. They will turn around and despise you and hate you and speak evilly of you. Even want to come against you because you condemn in their behavior and the doctrine of what they're following, which is teaching them to arm and rebel. No, we don't do that because you do that, you will you will guarantee yourself a swift ticket to the penitentiary. And this is what happened to the Black Panthers back in the 60s. Let them be an example to all you want to be new black militants and black revolutionaries here today. Look at the example of what happened to the Panther Party in the 60s and go ahead and try to follow Huey Newton and Bobby Seals. Go ahead and try to follow them and, and see the progress of how your organization will progress with the ISUPK trying to build up the largest black militant organization in America. They will they're going to be annihilated. And if Johanna continues on this road, they coming up into that school in Upper Derby and they're going to snatch his behind right out that school and throw his behind right on a concentration camp. Verse 15. Yea, truth faileth, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it, and it is it displeased him that there was no judgment. There was no truth being spoken amongst our people. He saw the confusion and the, and the, and the injustice going on amongst his people. But who's going to stand up for me and teach my people the truth? Who's going to tell my young brothers out here not to carry and conduct themselves in the way that they're conducting themselves, which is going to lead to death and destruction? Who's going to tell them this and, and take my words and teach them, not lean upon their own understanding? Who's going to do it? Because these, these organizations ain't doing it. Who, when you come to the True Message of Christ channel, you hear scriptures being broken down to you from the beginning to end, precept upon precept. You may hear these other groups pull about one or two scriptures and they do a 30 minute or 20 minute dissertation on two scriptures. No, the True Message of Christ channel, you hear scriptures and precepts being broken down to you, giving you your instructions. This is your lessons in your instruction manuals of the things that you need to know and how to conduct yourself when you're out on these streets so that you don't bring the judgment of the police department down on you. Let's go to the book of Philippians. Here's Philippians, the first chapter. And we're going to read verse 15. Some indeed preach Christ, even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. See that? 
Some will preach the Most High in Christ in goodwill, but some will preach him in envy and in strife, contention, all his militancy. The Most High told us not, not to try to set up no revolutionary group and not to be these kind of militants out there talking that garbage about what you're going to do because you don't have the, the capabilities to come against an, an enormous power like the U.S. government. The Bible tells us that the Lord set up Esau and gave him the fatness of the earth and he would control this earth through the sword. All so-called white people, according to the Bible, are the seed of Esau. They are the Edomites, according to biblical prophecy. And they were given the right and the reign to rule this earth for a certain period of time before their power was stripped and destroyed. So be at peace with them, like the scriptures say, be at peace with all men. Okay? Verse 16. The one preached Christ of contention, not sincerity, supposing to add affliction to my bonds. We are already in oppression now. You will now add affliction to our bonds by trying to rise, raise up some kind of militancy. Nothing wrong with being assertive and strong. But when you get to the point of now where you want to raise up militancy, now you're going off. And you're going into your own mind. These young black boys out here in the streets, like Tupac, was very defiant and disobedient. Why do you think Tupac was, was, had so much trouble in his life with the police department? The police department even beat him. And he, had, he was going to file a lawsuit against the police. Why do, you, why do you think they came after Pac like that? Because Pac presented himself like these, a lot of these young black boys out here in the streets, walking around in the streets with their pants hanging off their behinds, trying to be tough guys, trying to be thugs, trying to be gangsters. And these police officers are sick and tired of seeing these young degenerates walking up and down the streets. They shouldn't even be breathing fresh air in this country. That's the way the Ku Klux Klan thinks. That's the way the Aryan Nation and the neo-Nazi skinheads think. You, sh you are such a degenerate people, you shouldn't even be breathing fresh air in America. That's the way they feel. Now, is that true? No. But that's the way they feel. Because they see your behavior. They don't focus on the good, decent blacks. They focus on the negative, which is predominantly projected in the media. In the rap music, on the news, in your magazines, and on the radio. These, these young black boys will make anybody mad with them and the way they act. Legitimate businesses are trying to operate to feed their families. They're selling drugs all in front of the store. Instead of they take their behinds out there and go get a job like a decent man and support their families like a decent man. No, they, they don't want to do that. they rather stand in front of your store and sell drugs in front of your store. So the police get furious. But the, the reason why the cops are doing that is because the Lord is allowing the police to do that. I'm going to show you that as we go on. Now. Let's from there. Let's go to Ecclesiastes. Let's go to Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter. The scripture says this. Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. Surely oppression maketh the wise man mad, and the gift destroyeth the heart. Surely oppression maketh the wise man mad. I'll break down and gifts destroyeth the heart in another video. I mean, that's not the topic. I don't really want to go into that because that, that well, actually goes into the gift of tokenism, how our leaders are being bought off and they're selling out. That's the gift, the gift of tokenism. Monetary funds that are given to these leaders to sell their congregation out. But that goes into the churches and other political organizations. You know, the main aspect of the scripture I want to bring out is the, is the beginning of it. Surely oppression maketh the wise man mad. So there's nothing wrong with being angry at the conditions that our people are in. But you must use wisdom in everything you do. You don't get out in the streets rioting. You don't get out there rebelling to the point that we wanted to start damaging property and destroying your own community. Because you will bring martial law upon our people by your stupid and foolish behavior. Listening to these guys out here. And a lot of you black boys are angry. You already have that, that, that um, disobedient and rebellious spirit about you. So you walking down the street. These cops see you. They roll up on you. What's your name? Where do you live? Where are you going? You take an attitude with these police officers. Now they have a reason now. Don't give them no reason. I've been stopped before. Where are you going? Well, officer, I'm going this place. Officer, I just got off work or I'm, I'm on my way to work. Or I'm going here to the store. I'm doing this. Let's see some ID. You just show it to them. What are you going to do? Not show it to them? They'll run my ID. They see I don't have a criminal background at all. I mean, here's your ID back. You know, okay, well, go on about your business. And the police leave me alone. But you mouthing off at him 
and running your mouth, you give him a reason to pull his nightstick out or to pull those guns out. And these many of these young police officers that are on the police force that are rookies, they want to make their stripes and they want to make their bones and they want to, you know, uh, you know, show you that they're not tolerating this. We're we're new, fresh, fresh meat on the on on the force, and we're not going to tolerate it. And they'll pull their trigger and they'll blow your head right off. And then the, the government will protect these cops. Because a lot of them already know how you black boys are. So don't give them no reason. Now, the scripture says, Surely oppression will make a wise man mad. It's okay to be upset about our condition. It's even okay to speak about it. But this is what the scripture says. Let's go to Ephesians. The fourth chapter. Here's Ephesians 4 and 26. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Don't allow Satan to interject into your spirit to make you get out there and do things that you have no business doing to get yourself in trouble. The scripture says be angry. This is Ephesians 4 and 26. Be angry and sin, but don't not sin. Do not do things that's going to get you in trouble. Let... Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Do not let the sun go down upon your wrath. Meaning do not carry a grudge of anger every day, all day. That it begins to consume your mind and become a permanent part, part of your existence to where you're angry and bitter all the time. You know, the angry black man thing. Mm, the Lord told you don't do that because it will affect your judgment. It clouds your judgment. And it, it will seduce you into making wrong decisions that will wind up getting yourselves in trouble. Do no evil, then no harm will come upon you, as the scriptures tell us. So you young black boys got to realize you have to walk with wisdom. We're at war. This is a war zone. America is a war zone. But the war we're fighting is a spiritual war. And you must learn how to arm yourself in the word of the Most High. Let that be your shield and your buckler. Not running around trying to be gangsters and tough guys because these tough guys, you always see the fate of all these tough guys. They're either dead or in jail. That's why the cops are jumping on you like that and beating you like that because they're sick of your behavior. If you conducted yourself more in a more righteous mannerism, the police wouldn't be beating on blacks as much as they do. But because they see the way you act, they judge us all based on the ones of a few. But here's what the Messiah told us. Whose word trumps all. Matthew 10 and 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be therefore wise as serpents and humble hum, and harmless as doves. You see that? Be harmless as doves. Be meek and humble men. This will be our wisdom and knowledge in the sight of the nations. That the world may look upon the children of Israel and see the power of the light. To see that this people is a great and wise and mighty people through wisdom and knowledge. Through meekness and humbleness. Not trying to be tough guys and gangsters. Being monsters and degenerates. Acting like beasts out here. And acting like like some of these guys acting like brute beasts. Screaming and hollering and yelling and talking about what they're going to do. That's not the spirit that the Most High told us to have. He said exalt your voice. Lift up the voice like a trumpet. But it's the right way and the wrong way to do everything. We must learn how to be more meek and more humble and show more, more meekness. Okay, not not being these 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 degenerates that you see amongst our people. The scriptures told you this. Matthew 10 and 16. Behold, I send ye forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents, having knowledge of your surroundings, never going in areas that we have no business being in and always keeping your mind you know, constantly, you know, observing everywhere you go, your surroundings, especially in a violent city like Philadelphia, you have to constantly keep your eyes, you know, open. So be wise as a serpent and harmless as doves. Be as gentle and as kind and as meek and as peaceful as you possibly can. Because the Bible says the meek shall inherit the earth. Right? Not a black militant, but the meek shall inherit the earth. Go and read Christ's ministry when he spoke uh, uh, in Matthew the fifth chapter, and and the uh, the, the sermon of the Beatitudes, he said, "The meek shall inherit the earth, and blessed are the peacemakers." 
not militants, not revolutionaries, arming themselves with guns and, and talking all this militant garbage out on the streets. He said the meek shall inherit the earth. Now, let's go to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah 15 and 11. The Lord said, verily, verily, shall the Lord said, verily, it shall be well with thy remnant. Verily, I will cause the enemy to entreat thee well in the time of evil and in the time of affliction. So those that please the most high and do and try to the best of their ability to serve him and to teach his word and to live according to his word to the best of their ability. He will make thy enemy to entreat thee well, meaning police officers may stop you and they may approach you. But the way you conduct yourself and the way you carry yourself, these police officers will honor you and respect you. I've never had problems with them. They can look at me like many of you out there can look at me and see that, well, he's not one of those type of guys. And I'm not. I'm not one of them guys standing on the corner selling crack on the corner. I'm not one of those guys out there pimping somebody's daughter or, or, or uh, breaking in people's houses and, and robbing and stealing and carjacking. I wasn't raised like that. That's why I don't have a criminal record. So who's a better example to follow? A man out there yelling and screaming, talking about he going to kill this person or that person or, or a brother who walks the straight and narrow. Yeah, I've made mistakes in my life. And I've cleaned up a lot of mistakes that I've made in my life. But I have never done anything to where you would see me sitting up in the penitentiary. Why? Because I had parents to raise me and to teach me right from wrong. And I, plus I had that ultimate parent, the most high, who puts upon in my conscience, no that's not the direction I want you to go. No, that's not the area I want you to go in. No, these guys, I don't want you associating with them. I'm not, I don't want you with this group over here. I don't want you with that group over there. This is where I want you right here. There are different administrations to this body of Christ. This is what I want you to do. And you spread my word this way. This is your administration. This is your office. I've called you to do this. So do it. You understand? So, I've been given an office and my job is not to, to go out there and, and, and try to build up an organization. My job is to be a teacher and to show you the, what the words of the Most High says from precept to precept. So this is what I do. And I'm trying to give you young black men and you black women out there instructions. Do nothing out there that will get yourselves in trouble. I've said this in various videos. When a police officer stop you, 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 you answer that man's questions. You don't be defiant with this man because you can't win. Now, let's go to Romans. <clears throat> let's go to the book of Romans. The 12th chapter. Let's go to Romans 12 and 17. Recompense to do no man, recompense to no man evil for evil, provide things honest in, in, in the sight of all men. So let's read that again. Repents to, re, re, uh, repents to do no man evil for evil, provide things honest in the sight of all men. Don't reward evil for evil, is what the scriptures are saying. Somebody do something to you, you let the most high deal with it. The Most High will judge these police officers for murdering innocent, unarmed men. Some of these men, they brought the judgment down upon themselves because of the way they carry themselves. But a lot of innocent young black men are being murdered by these police officers. The Lord will, will, will retrieve that innocent blood and he will punish these police officers for taking lives. Let's prove that. Genesis 9 and 6. Whoso sheddeth man's blood by man's whoso, whoso sheddeth man's blood by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. So whosoever sheddeth a man's blood that he die by the hands of man shall God shed your own blood. So that's the fate of a lot of these police officers when they stand before Christ in the day of judgment. And that's the fate of a lot of you black boys in these street gangs out here, these drug these, these drug dealers out here killing other brothers over gang violence, over drug violence, over drug corners, trying to take over another block. And you shoot and murder your own brother and you kill that brother. Then 
maybe a few years later, somebody kills you, whether it's a police officer or a rival drug dealer. You got what you deserve. Whoso sheddeth the man's blood by the hand of man, shall God shed your own blood. So that's divine judging. Now. Let's go to Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, and let's show you why these things are occurring. Deuteronomy 28 and 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. Because these prophecies and these curses that are upon our people shall be a sign and a wonder upon us forever. Because of our disobedience and rebellion. Because we are the children of Israel. We are the Most High's chosen people. So the Lord said, these signs and these curses in the book of Deuteronomy shall be a curse upon us forever. For as long as there is existence on this planet and this present world that we're in, there will be a sign and a curse on us. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and, and upon thy seed forever. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and the want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. You see that? That's why you tearing up those stores like that. Because there are different people of other races that own those stores, but they're just going to rebuild them right back. They're going to get over in, uh, with, with, with the insurance settlement. You know, the insurance companies are going to pay the damages and those stores will be rebuilt and they'll be right back operational in your community within the next few weeks. Stupid. So you tore them down, but the insurance company is going to help them rebuild right back. So what good did you do? Jump over to 62. And, and ye shall be left few in numbers, wherein ye were as the stars of heaven for multitude, because thou wouldest not obey the voice of the Lord thy God, and it shall come... And it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoice over you to do you good and to multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught. And ye shall be plucked from off the land whither thou goest to possess it. So the Lord said this, as I rejoice to do good by you, I will rejoice also to do evil by you because you will not obey me. I will rejoice to do evil by you also. That's his word. Because you will not obey I will rejoice in my heart to do evil by you. I'm going to show you how he's going to rejoice to do that. This is Psalm 17 and 13. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. Who's the wicked? Who's the most high sword? The white man. Known as Esau, according to the Bible. He's the sword that the father is using to kill and to beat and to punish and to maim and destroy our people for our people's disobedience. He's the sword. That's why these cops are shooting you down like that. Because he's the sword that the father is using. He's the belt to beat your behinds with his nightsticks. Because the Lord is fed up with you stupid little black boys doing wickedness and stupidity out there in these streets. Not carrying yourself as decent, honorable, respectable men in this society. So he's using them as the sword to punish you. Arise, O Lord. Disappoint him. Cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. That's Psalm 17 and 13. Deliver... My soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. The sword is an instrument of death and an instrument of punishment. He's the sword that the father is using to punish you stupid little black boys out here who will not get right with the Lord. Now, let's go to the book of Amos. You know, here's the book of Amos, the seventh chapter, verse 16. Now, therefore, hear thou the word of the Lord. Thou saith, prophesied not against Israel, and drop not thy word against the house of, of Isaac. Many of our people saying that they don't want to hear this. Many of us, especially these younger black men, they don't want to hear this. They don't want to hear. See, when, when I did this video and it was called Police Brutality, the title of the video, you automatically think this was, I'm going to come and just start slamming the police. But the Bible says that the word of the Lord is as a two-edged sword. Meaning it cuts you when you're going off and it also cuts the enemy also. So you you are heavily involved in the destruction of our community. You can't blame everything on the police. If you did right more better by your community and by your God, 
the Lord would protect you and these things wouldn't be occurring in our community. But because you want to transgress and disobey and be defiant and follow after what you see on television or on a rap CD, this is what your judgment is. Now, let's go to Ephesians 4 and 25. Wherefore, this is Ephesians, um, excuse me, This. let's go to the book of Amos, we already read Amos. Let's go to the book. Yeah, let's go. Let, 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 for, let, let's go back to that. Amos 4 and, and, and 26. Be ye, ang be ye angry and sin not. Let the sun, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give a place to the devil. Do not let Satan inject into inside your spirit to where you start doing things you have no business doing. That's that that's that that's a, a very good scripture. You can be angry. You can be disappointed. You can even protest. There's nothing wrong with that. But getting out there riding in, in the streets, you know, tearing up property. There's nothing wrong with having a congressional hearing. There's nothing wrong with going and having a, a city council hearing. There's nothing wrong with going to the mayor's office and, 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 and talking to the mayor about the problems that you see in our communities. But when you start tearing up stuff. That's when you that's when you 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 become a lawless civilian in this in this society, a lawless citizen. Now you're going to inject punishment from the police department. Now they're going to be looking for you, especially if you have done some internal damage. The Bible says do no evil that was so that no harm will come upon you. But a lot of you brothers and sisters will not listen. I'm going to show you why. I'm going, to, I'm going to show you why a lot of you brothers and sisters will not listen to instructions from the Lord. The, now, the Bible tells us to speak the truth, everyone to his neighbor. Right. So this is what I'm doing. Now I'm going to show you why a, a lot of you brothers and sisters. And, and, and let, let me say this before I go to it, that a lot of black women out there, they love to get out in the streets when their son has been shot down and murdered and start protesting they love to go and hire an attorney or get Jesse Jackson or Al Sharpton or any of these political leaders to fight their cause for them when their son has been murdered or when their son has been beaten by the police but a lot of you black mothers know your sons are bad you know your sons are out there in the streets doing things they got no business doing you know the crowd they're hanging with let's show you here's second Ezra the fifth chapter, verse eight, there shall be a confusion also in many places and the fire shall be ought sent out again. And the wild beasts shall change their places and menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. Menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. You look at some of our women in our communities are very hideous looking women. They don't carry themselves like women at all. They're not feminine at all. They want to be just as tough and just as rough and just as hard as the men. And look at the children they bring forth. They bring forth monsters. Go into the heart of North Philadelphia and look at some of these women and the way they look. These women don't even carry themselves like young ladies. They carry themselves just like men, trying to act rough and tough, just like these men. And look at the children they bring forth. 90% of the women that live in the hood, most of their children, if they're of age or, or have spent time in jail or in juvenile detention, you name me just a few that haven't. Most of them have. Because that's the lifestyle that they want to live. They want to be just as tough as these guys in the hood. So they are the menstruous women that will bring forth monsters. And they know that their children are bad. A lot of these black women know their sons are bad. Okay. Let's go to the book of Proverbs. Yet they want to scream out there in the street and try to get people to support their cause when their son gets shot. Or when their son get beaten by the police. But these women know what their sons are all about. They know that these sons ain't no good. They know that their sons are bad. Alright. Let's let's go to the, the book of Proverbs. The 30th chapter. Now let's see what the Lord said. Out of the mouth of Solomon. Proverbs 30 and 11. There is a generation that curses their father and doeth not bless their mother. There's a generation that is so rebellious of children today that will not honor their parents or listen to instructions by their parents. But you have some parents today who, who shouldn't even be parents. You have some mothers out there and fathers that should not be ha have children. 
a lot of these women that live in the inner cities and ghettos, they like to, 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 to have children and mess with men that they know are no good. Just because they're selling drugs on the corner and they got money. You know, that's all the black woman cares about is money. She's very money hungry and materialistic. Instead of getting out there and working for it for herself, she, she'd rather sit on welfare and collect subsidizing from the government, whether it's housing or, or welfare and insurance and benefits. Instead of getting a job like a, like a regular woman would, like a virtuous woman would, they'd rather collect subsidizing from the government. And then they run after these drug dealers in the street. These, these tough guys, these wannabe gangsters walking around in the street doing nothing but destroying their communities and killing their own people with the drugs that they're pushing out on the, on the streets. Instead of they going and find themselves a decent man who, who's a family-oriented man, they want these bums, these knuckleheads, these gangsters and thugs. And then look at the children that they bring forth. They bring forth these monsters, as the, as the Apocrypha says, monstrous women. And where I read that at... was in the, uh, the Apocrypha. And these were the 14 missing books that were separated from the Bible. Okay, so the Apocrypha is valid, it is canonized, and it is part of Scripture. Okay, the Apocrypha was separated from the Bible, so it is part of the Bible. Okay, and the, and the Apocrypha says the word Apocrypha means a way hidden. Okay, they separated these books and they, they hid them, but we have them through the Spirit of the Most High. We have these books. OK, but the scripture says that menstruous, menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. And that's what you black women are breeding, monsters. And then you're so angry at these black men, but you're not being a mother to them. You're not being a, um, a father. The father's not being a, a father to these kids. So you let your daughters walk out the house dressed any kind of way they want. And you let your sons hang out with any kind of bums out there in the street that he chooses. And then you wonder why these kids wind up getting in trouble. And then when they get themselves assaulted by the police, now you're ready to get out there and, and, and get with a, a pastor or a preacher in the church. And now you're in front of a microphone with, with the news uh, casters in front of you talking about your son. My son was a good boy. You're lying. Many of you black women know your sons are monsters. You know your sons are bad. You know these boys out here selling drugs in the street and doing deep. Now, there's some of them that are decent young men because I'm a living example of that. I never got out there and did these things in the street. And that's why the Lord always protected me. And I never had to go through police brutality. I had a mother and father who raised me the correct way. Through the spirit of the most high and through his divine judgment and his guidance. Proverbs 22 and 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. When he's old, he will not depart from it. So I had a father and a mother who trained their children up in the way that they should go. So when we were of age, we would not depart from the way. Okay? That's why we never wound up in jail. Let's go to Isaiah. I got a few more scriptures and I'll shut it down. Isaiah 51 and 20. Thy sons, black woman. Thy sons have fainted, black man. They lie at the head of all the streets. What's the head of all the streets? The corners. And that's all you see these black boys do is standing on the corner all day. Go in any ghettos around any major city. I could point them all out throughout Philadelphia. But with cities where you dwell, where you live, you see nothing but black boys standing on the corner. Men as well as young men standing on the corner. They lie at the head of all the streets as a wild bull in the net. Have you ever seen a bull in a net that's been trapped in the net that's trying to get out of that net? They act wild, uncivilized, and what? Savage. And the police drive right by and they see these young black boys out on these street corners acting the way they do. That's why they get out their squad cars and they come around and say, what are you guys doing out here? You live in this area? Now they think the cops harassing them. The cops ain't harassing you. Look at the way you, you act and if you present yourself out here on the streets. They are full of rebuke. They are full of the fear of the Lord, the rebuke of thy God. You see that? They hate their situation because of the conditions that they're living in. But work to get yourself out of that. The Bible says despise not hard and laborious work. I have a job. I work. I may not like some of the things that I have to do on that job. But I know in order to put food in my stomach and to pay my bills, I have to work. So the Bible says despise not laborious work. But the thing is, a lot of these lazy young men don't want to work. They'd rather sell drugs. And all that's going to do is, is, is wind you up in the penitentiary. So that's why the cops jump on you the way they do. Because they know you're out there selling drugs. To the ones out there that are doing it. And it's sad to say that a lot of good, decent black men are getting caught up in 
the the stereotypes of the negative ones. My mother told us that when we were younger, the good is going to have to suffer with the bad. My mother told us that. And that's the job of a mother to teach her children and to teach other women. A mother's job is to feed what she gets from the Heavenly Father through her husband and then feed it to the children. So I take a lot of the essential things that my father and mother taught us and carry that on into my adult life. Yeah, I've made some mistakes here and there. I'm not going to say I was perfect, but I obeyed the major things she told us and my father told us. My father instilled hard work and values in us. My mother instilled spirituality in us and moral uh you know, values. I made some mistakes. Yes, I did. I slipped in and the Lord jacked me up for some of the mistakes that I made, but I've learned from them. I've learned. I, my mother told me I should not have been out there doing whatever mistakes I made. My father warned me over here and I learned. That's the point. If you learn from it, then the Lord will accept you. But if you keep doing it, things out in the world, the Lord's man, I, I can't deal with this guy. OK, but you must repent from those things you're doing. Learn from the things that you're doing. All right. I got a few more scriptures, then I'm going to shut it down. All right. Yeah, I made some mistakes in my life, but but I mean, I have never done anything detrimental where I, you know, wound up in prison. But I have made mistakes. I'm not going to sit up here and lie to you all say I was the perfect guy in the world. Nobody can say that. But there's there's a limit. Now, here's the book of Amos 7 and 17. Therefore, thus says the Lord, thy wife shall be a harlot in the city, prostitution, whores in our community. We know that's prevalent throughout all of our communities, throughout whichever city we dwell in throughout America. And thy sons and thy daughters shall fall by the sword and thy land shall be divided by line. And, and thou shalt die in a polluted land and Israel shall surely go into captivity forth of his land. When it says that thy land shall be divided by line, county line, city line, state line, throughout America. This is the polluted land that our people would die in. And our sons and our daughters would fall by the sword. Most likely through gang violence, drugs, and by the hands of the police department. But here's Revelation 13 and 9. If a man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the is the patience and faith of the saints. So they will get their reward. To a lot of these evil, wicked police officers who are racist to the core, that are going around murdering innocent people, they will get their reward. But the Lord said, unto me is vengeance and, re and recompense. Romans 12 and 19, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I, I will repay, says the Lord. The Lord said he will repay. He will, he will bring vengeance on them. Okay? With this last scripture, I'm going to shut it down. And I hope you got something out of the study. And um, I hope that you truly carry yourselves in the ways of which I tried to expound on you to carry yourselves when you're out in the street. Be at peace with this man. As the Bible says, be at peace with all men. 